Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I want to do a string art painting from the kit that you have. So let's begin. What you're going to need is your sketch pad, your pen, your string of course, one of the panels, and three of your colors. Just pick three and I'm going to use the cool color since it's supposed to be winter time with one warm color. Uh, the cool colors will be the blue and the green. Anything with red, yellow, or orange that looks like fire, that's considered warm. And then you'll need, of course, what's not in the kit is a container with water. And as you can see, this is just the bottom of a drink bottle cut off. You can just use a cup use the plastic because it's reusable and of course you know I like to recycle so I'm using the bottom of that now another thing for future references uh, purposes if you want to do more string art if you get one of those little cheap kits uh, paint kits out of the dollar store and use you use the paint of course but then just rinse it out and cut it I usually like to stick with three colors that is because it keeps your painting from being muddy looking that means all the colors running together and turning into something that you cannot describe so use just the three colors and you'll be okay. also what's not in the kit is a piece of plastic and as you can see this is you can use saran wrap but I just cut off the bottom of a bag now the sketchbook is for your paint notation I have yellow blue and green set that aside and out of your way because I don't have a you don't have a paintbrush in there I want to use exactly what you have in there I want this background to be really really cool so I'm not going to put the paint directly on here I'm going to place the paint just a little on the paint on the uh, excuse me on the plastic I'm going to dip it in the water and because it's the background I want it diluted down and to me that's too dark so I'm flipping the plastic bag to put the paint inside so you can see it's not on my hand and then I'll come back with some more uh, water I want to lighten that up it's the background color and I want it in the background I don't want it to compete with the string art that I place on the top it doesn't have to cover every spot so some of the white background can show through but I don't want it to be a lot because your eye will go straight to the white your eye have a tendency to go to the negative space and that's a little too dark right there you can see that Now, remember, you can also use a paper towel to subtract some of this, and I probably should do that. So, that's on there like that. I'm going to see if I can grab me a piece of paper so towel. I'm going to use this t-shirt, which I normally use this for oil paint. But as you can see, it's subtracting, and that's what I want it to do. I want that background to look like a watercolor wash. Sorry about the noise. It's better light outside. There you go. It looks almost like a tie-dyed look. See that? Great. It's in the background. Backgrounds are supposed to be in the background. So now that's done. Your paints are going to be a little thick, which is okay. Remember with your strings. it's easier to just dip them in the water first and wet. I'm going to do the yellow last. So I'm uncapping this and I think I'm going to just put the whole thing down near except one in. And if you have a um, you can use a pencil or if you have a popsicle stick that will work fine. 
or you can use the end of a paintbrush. So right now it's handy, so I'm going to use the end of a paintbrush. It doesn't matter what you use, just something to put it down in there, in the paint. And what I pull out is what I'm going to use. Now it's up to you, remember how and where you want to take this, but you're going to drag it. You can do the stipling. It doesn't matter. To get a variety of shapes. That's what you're going to do. That looks to be, because it's large, it's going to be the focal point. And I'm just going to slide this in the water because I don't want to use any more of that. And the reason why I'm putting it in the water is because it'll dilute it down and I can rinse it off and reuse the string later. So let me cap up this blue because I'm definitely not going to use any more of that. And I'm really kind of looking at subtracting some of that that's on there. I don't mind. I think I don't mind the, the blue so much. It's quite a bit. And I may not touch it. I may leave it alone. But I am going to add some yellow to it. Now, if I add the yellow to it now while the blue is still wet, you know it's going to mix. And it's going to give me a green. So I'm going to see if I can get it to blend in some areas and not others. So I'm going to hold both ends, loose ends here, and dip this part down in the paint like so and of course I need that brush and again the handle and what I pull out is what I'm going to use you can also use that handle to pull off some of that paint if you want I know it's been a while since we did I'm going to sit, set this aside because I don't want to knock it over it's been a while since we have done the string art so it may take a little getting used to and I really only want you to use one panel that way you have three separate paintings you may want to do something different so I have both the ends and let me see I think I like just placing it on there and lifting it because I did not squeeze all the paint off when I pulled it up out of the paint container I'm able to make these markings and I want them to run off the end you want your paint markings to run off the end so it's not so stiff now these markings across the blue push the blue in the back I don't want to overdo it with the yellow. The eye tends to go to the warm color. Yellow will come forward. Blue will go back because it's cool. That's fine. I think I will leave that as it is. I may want a little blue on top of that. just here or there with the yellow see if there's enough on there to just tap it nope because it's not flow paint I can't tap it and make it go over but Can you see that? I just squished it across there without blending it too much. There's a slight green tint to it there. But that just pushed that piece back behind there. So I want the blues to interact with the yellows. I don't want them to look like all the yellow is just sitting on top of the blue. By causing a break with the paint here or there, it'll look like the yellow is actually running throughout the blue or in between 
in front of and behind or that the yellow just kind of ran out of the blue which we know it can't but I kind of like that now as it dries the colors are going to change some And I think I'm going to leave that alone because I'm looking at it from a different angle. And remember, just turn it. You got to decide which way you want it oriented. It's so weird. It's starting to look like something else. When I turn it around, it looks almost like a um, stingray from this. Let me see from this direction. It looks almost like a stingray. So I think I'm going to leave it alone, get it to dry, and then I'm going to come back with my trusty dusty, or whatever they call it, ink pen, and see if I can add some hints here and there. Alright, so we're back. I'm back, should I say. Um, I'm just looking at a reference picture on the phone of the Stingray, and it's more... For some reason, I thought it had a head that stuck out, but it's almost on here. So for this part, this is a gel pen, and I'm going to see how well this works. If not, I'll have to come back with some paint and do this, but I want this to be the part where the stinger is. And I'm running it kind of off the page I'm going to have to make it a little thicker than I want it to but it needs to be really pointed on this end and what's happening I'm gonna wait and come back to that because I'm gonna make this paint run into this black part here you can see that's black and that's blue and I'm going to get it to run into there but I'm going to try to do something up here first and it's so weird this piece looks like it is part of the body so I'm going to do just that make it part of the body there's a little eyeball or something on there I guess I don't know what that is it's, it's almost like a shark so I'm going to put the eyeball here, which means I'm going to have, and I'm going to make it mostly black. See if I can zoom in. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to make it mostly black. You have some white. Once you, you can make this whole thing black. That's what I'll do. I'm leaving some white showing through you make the whole thing black and then you come back with the white and dot put a dot on it for light so this I'm going to say it's got like a squarish nose and I'm squaring the nose I'm just following what's already there this blue is already here and I'm just following it and then this is his body and I just rounded it a little and this is going to be his other one and it's that way and I'm just going to come up here it can't be as big as this and I'm going between the yellow because I want oops sorry I'm going between the yellow because I want it to look like it's on top of it and I'm pushing it to the background I don't want him all the way in the foreground there can you see that so this is his other piece and then I'm just bringing this down that's still wet and this is going to be his other side I don't even know what you call these but that's it that's his head now I'm going to put some blue in here but I'm going to make it lighter than this and now I'm going to I'm going to take and run this blue 
down into this piece that I drew on here just by because I don't have a brush and it's creating a little texture look too close enough for government work and now I need to get that blue and add and add a little here and there with that blue and I don't want it really um, dark I want it a little lighter than normal You know, I tell you what you can do. You can use a Q-tip. I don't have a Q-tip right here with me, but you can use a Q-tip to do this painting with. And it will work similar to this. So I'm going to use a tip of this, the handle of the brush, but use a Q-tip to come back in. And add that paint color. It's okay if it blends a little with whatever you have going on, but don't rush it. Take your time and see what you see. Remember, some this is uh, intuitive painting. So you don't want to rush it. In fact, come back later, and I'm going to put a little on this head here. following the contour of what I would say is his head. You can add some highlights, some better highlights on this with the white paint. I just don't have any on hand right now. And then I wanna go back up into this piece Notice I'm not covering up all of the white. I'm using some of the white to give me that look that I need. You can go ahead and add white if you want to, but I'm trying to stick to just the two colors. There it is. Probably come back. We forget about our finger painters. There, I don't want to lose these light and that's really pieces of the canvas and I don't want to lose that. So you don't have to paint everything, everything, but just enough so it's recognizable. I kind of like that. I don't think I want to mess it up. So I may call that quits. So it looks sort of like a stingray. It wasn't what I thought. At first I thought it was a goose flying. Some type of bird in flight. But And that comes from just taking your time and turning it around and looking to see what you do see. Okay, thanks for joining me, and I do want to see your painting.